celebrates the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Presider and homilist for today's Mass will be Monsignor Robert Sifrin, Vicar Jenner, General of the Diocese of Youngstown. Concelebrants include religious order priests serving the Diocese of Youngstown. Deacons for today's Mass include Deacon Robert Kudaka from St. Christine Parish in Youngstown, and Deacon Michael Kajancic from St. Charles Parish in Boardman. Music for this Mass is under the direction of Dr. Daniel Laguinha, Director of Music for St. Columba Cathedral. The cantor for today's Mass is Colleen Harris. The flute is by Angela Tiberio. We gather in gratitude for the consecrated women and men who faithfully witness and joyfully serve God's people in the Diocese of Youngstown and invite you to join in prayer with the St. Columba Parish community, diocesan parishioners, and the religious women and men of the Diocese of Youngstown as this Eucharistic liturgy begins. God. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. On behalf of Bishop Murray and the Church of the Diocese of Youngstown, we welcome the religious men and women who represent the many communities who serve our church. We ask God's particular blessings and prayers on them on this day of world prayer for consecrated life, the 22nd year that we pray especially for those who have answered the call of the Lord to serve the church so well. As we gather here, let us call to mind our sins that the Lord's mercy might make our worship more perfect. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God. For you alone are the Holy One. 
Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, and relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. our young people to come forward for the liturgy of the word. The first reading from the book of the prophet Job will be read by Sister Yvonne Horning, a member of the Dominican Sisters of Peace. touch your hearts and give you the gifts of his love to carry to others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of a hireling? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Psalm 147, will be sung by cantor Colleen Harris. Psalms to our God, how pleasant to chant fitting praise. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and brings back Israel's exiles. Praise the Lord. Brokenhearted, he binds up all their wounds. He counts out the number of the stars. He calls each one by its name. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, who heals the brokenhearted. Our Lord is great and almighty. His wisdom can never be measured. The Lord lifts up the lowly. He casts down the wicked to the ground. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord.
The second reading from the first letter of St. Corinthians will be read by Joel Cruzweiser, a student at Ursuline High School in Youngstown. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Permanent Deacon Robert Kataka will proclaim the gospel from St. Mark, and Monsignor Sifrin will give the homily. After the homily, Monsignor Sifrin will impart a special blessing on behalf of the bishop to all of the religious present in the cathedral today. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord.
When Bishop Murray asked me to serve in his place today, I accepted it as a true honor to be in prayer for the religious men and women who have so abundantly blessed the Church of the Diocese of Youngstown by their commitment to the Lord, by their commitment to each other, and their service and ministry in so many rich ways. Before we turn to the scriptures this morning, I'd invite you, many of you, to consider who are the religious men and women who've touched your life in a profound way over time and whose memories you cherish because of the love, the goodness, the joy that they demonstrated in their commitment. Can you think of their names? I had the good fortune of experiencing religious life ever since I can remember. My aunt is a member of the Sisters of the Humility of Mary, so there was always something uh, concrete and real about religious life. And to see the many men and women who serve our diocese, it's truly a blessing. But it wasn't until a few years into my priestly ministry that one of my colleagues, a sister of Notre Dame, made an observation that I felt was very helpful in cherishing this gift of religious life to the church. And she said, there's no such thing as generic religious man or woman. They have a charism in their particular community. They're not just a sister. They're a sister of Notre Dame, an oblate sister, an Ursuline sister, a humility Mary sister. They're not just a religious man but Brothers of Christian Instruction about how they choose to respond to the Lord's call in the context of a given religious community with a rich history and a charism that is like a special flower in the garden of the church, making the love of Jesus present in a special way. If you'd like to see how many different religious communities serve in our diocese, just look toward the back of the program and see the many communities that thrive and serve in our diocese. One of the insights into religious vocation and priestly vocation for that matter is what brings it to the joy that really makes it manifest the Lord's love in a concrete way. I remember when I was a young priest, the Knights of Columbus in the state of Ohio were willing to sacrifice time, energy, and effort to look at what are the components that help young people say yes to the Lord in a vocation, to religious life, to priesthood. And they conducted a professional survey throughout the state of Ohio to ask people who had accepted the call to religious life or to priesthood to find out what were the components that prompted them to say yes to the Lord. In those days, if you can remember, many vocation directors were always the young, the vibrant, the enthusiastic young nun, young brother, or priest. What the survey found was that those who had responded to the Lord's call were touched by and moved by the, the more mature <clears throat> religious priest who was happy in their vocation, who was truly contented in saying yes to the Lord over time. How true. When our words, when our face, when our, when our person exudes the joy of following Jesus in our particular vocation, it can't help but touch the hearts of those we meet. And we can find that lesson also in today's scriptures. St. Paul was able to touch the hearts of so many men and women because he was passionate about the people he served. He loved them deeply, profoundly, wanted the best for them. And his letters, when we read them, are always filled with that sense of urgency, that sense of commitment, that sense of joy in wanting God's people to have the gifts the Lord wishes to give them in such a way that it brings life and love and joy to their hearts. A good lesson for all of us in our discipleship, but particularly one 
in those vocations to religious life and priesthood that can make all the difference. <coughs> How can we make the message of St. Paul alive for us? Sometimes it's not easy. Look at the book of Job. He struggled so long and so deeply. And it was only on the other side of the journey of such suffering that he recaptured the love and joy of life. Even in the gospel, when they come to Peter's home, the first thing they point out to Jesus is that Simon's mother-in-law is in bed ill. He goes to her, takes her by the hand, cures her, and she immediately gets up and serves. She responds with hospitality and joy. But the disciples haven't quite learned that lesson yet. Because what do they do early the next morning? They want Jesus to be theirs. And he struggles to show them that he, they have to share what they receive with others. That he came to spread the good news to everyone. So in our vocation, may the Lord bless each of us with the joy of following Jesus, enriched by his love and mercy, but so much so that we can't help but keep it to ourselves. We lovingly want to share it with others. So may the Lord help us, like the disciples in the gospel, to hear the Lord's invitation to bring the good news to others. May we be filled with the enthusiasm of St. Paul so that our whole life becomes a message of the word of God, a life of reaching out, evangelizing, just by the very nature of our relationship with Jesus. So may the Lord bless our religious communities. We thank you for your service. We pledge our prayers and support, not only today, but in the weeks and months to come, so that truly the rich gift that you are might be cherished, encouraged, enjoyed for years to come. And on behalf of Bishop Murray and indeed for our whole congregation, we pray the Lord's blessings upon you. Father, in your loving wisdom, you have singled out many daughters and sons to be disciples, espoused to Christ, and to receive the honor of his love. Father, we earnestly pray, continue to send the fire of the Holy Spirit into the hearts of these consecrated persons to keep alive within them the holy desire he had given them. Lord, may the glory of baptism and holiness of life shine in their hearts, strengthened by the vows of their consecration. May they always be one with you in loving fidelity to Christ, their only bridegroom. May they cherish the church as their mother and love the whole world as God's creation, teaching all people to look forward to joy and hope to the good things of heaven. Lord, Holy Father, Continue to guide the steps of your servants and guard them on their pilgrim way through life. When they come at last to the throne of Christ the King, may they not fear him as their judge, but hear the voice of their bridegroom lovingly inviting them to the wedding feast of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite the congregation now to stand in prayer as we say our prayer of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. Amen, and for our salvation, 
He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. And His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Go with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident of the Father's great love and care for us, let us turn to him with our prayers and petitions. For all those in leadership positions in the church, may they be strengthened in their tireless efforts to bring others to know Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected officials, may they work to bring about a just society for everyone, especially for those whose voices are unheard. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who face the daily hardship of searching for food or shelter, may they be strengthened by the Lord standing by them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us in this faith community, may we evangelize in our everyday lives through our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially those who have no one to pray for them, may they be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. For the parishioners of St. Columba, whom we remember in a special way during this liturgy, we pray to the Lord. For those consecrated to God by the vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience, that they may seek to live their baptismal promises more intensely and have the grace to persevere in their commitment to the Lord and serve with open hearts and willing spirits. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have responded to the prompting of the Holy Spirit to be a consecrated person, that they may experience the support of the Church as they continue their growth in holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Gracious and merciful Father, hear the prayers of your people and open wide the doors of our hearts and homes to the gifts that you give us, that we might always rejoice in your love and share it with others. We ask these things through Christ our Lord. The gifts of bread and wine, symbolic of the gift of our lives, along with the contribution of food items, symbolic of the ministry and outreach of religious women and men throughout the diocese, are presented now. Bringing forth the gifts are Antonine Sister Grace Aziri, Brother Aloysius Milela of the Society of St. Paul in Canfield, Sister Barbara Noble, a Humility of Mary sister. Ms. Regina Oliva, a member of the Order of Virgins. John Pasternak, a secular Franciscan. And brother of Christian instruction, Ernest Paquet. It's beating once 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all the total church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that we may become, they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image, setting humanity over the whole world and all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you for your mighty works through Christ our Lord. Angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Columba and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Eucharist is at the heart of the Church's life, and also of the consecrated life. By means of the Eucharist, all consecrated persons are called to live Christ's Paschal Mystery, uniting them to Him by offering their own lives to the Father through the Holy Spirit. When Saint Pope John Paul II, in 1997, initiated World Day of Consecrated Life, he gave three reasons for the celebration. First, to praise the Lord more solemnly and to thank him for the great gift of consecrated life that enriches and gladdens the Christian community by its charisms and by the edifying fruits of so many lives totally given to the cause of the kingdom. Second, this day is intended to promote knowledge of and esteem for the consecrated life by the entire people of God. And third, religious themselves are invited to celebrate together solemnly the marvels which the Lord has accomplished in them, to discover again the divine beauty spread by the Spirit in their way of life and to acquire a more vivid consciousness of their irreplaceable mission in the church and in the world. In addition to religious life, there are secular institutes and societies of apostolic life whose members profess vows or promises, most of which do not live in community or share a common apostolate. Rather, they seek to make sacred the secular world in which they live and work. Another form of consecrated life is that of consecrated virgins living in the world who commit themselves to serve the church under public vows and are consecrated by the diocesan bishop. The rich diversity of forms of consecrated life is a great gift to the church in general and to the Diocese of Youngstown in particular. As we celebrate this call and this gift, we pray for those vowed in this life. We also pray for young people that they may understand the meaning and value of this particular vocation and respond generously to God's call. Among the religious orders of women who serve the Diocese of Youngstown are these, the Adorers of the Precious Blood of Christ, the Antonine Sisters, the Benedictine Sisters of the Byzantine Rite, the Congregation of the Divine Spirit, the Dominican Sisters of Peace, the Oblate Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the Poor Clare Nuns of Perpetual Adoration, the Sisters of Charity of St. Augustine, the Sisters of Divine Providence, the Sisters of Notre Dame, the Sisters of St. Francis of Mary Immaculate, the Sisters of St. Francis of the Neumann Communities, Sisters of St. Francis of the Providence of God, Sisters of St. Francis of Tiffin, Sisters of St. Joseph of St. Mark, Sisters of St. Joseph, Third Order of St. Francis, Sisters of the Humility of Mary, Sisters of the Order of St. Basil the Great, 
and the Ursuline Sisters of Youngstown. The religious orders of men who serve in the Diocese of Youngstown are these. The Brothers of Christian Instruction, the Franciscan Friars, the Order of Preachers, the Society of Jesus, and the Society of St. Paul. There is one Society of Apostolic Life in the Diocese, the Priestly Fraternity of St. Peter. There are two secular institutes, the Holy Family Institute and the Secular Franciscan Order. And there are consecrated virgins living in the world in our own Diocese of Youngstown. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for braving the weather to join us today for this beautiful celebration. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Monsignor Sifrin for celebrating such a beautiful liturgy on this World Day for Consecrated Life. We truly and, and deeply appreciate your homily and the great su the support that you give to the religious in this diocese and you have given for, given for so many years. Thank you, Monsignor. 
Thank you also to Monsignor Polando. Thank you to Monsignor Polando, who is the rector of St. Columba Cathedral, and you, dear parishioners of this church, beautiful church, for hosting this celebration. You're always very gracious and welcoming. And we're also very grateful to our wonderful music director, Dr. Dan Laguinia, and to the other musicians for helping us pray and worship God with your gift of music. And we're especially grateful to all of the adult and youth representatives that came from some of the schools and, and parishes from around the diocese. We really appreciate your making that effort. Thank you to CTNY for taping this lovely mass and broadcasting it on Ecumenical Television Channel. Uh, you'll see the booklet, the back of your booklet, there's the program days and times. There is just one adjustment for those of you who have spectrum cable serving in the areas beginning with Brookfield, Lowellville, and so on, your channel now is 11. Also thanks to the generosity and kindness to the Voc Youngstown Vocations Support Society who have provided light refreshments that will be served at St. Columba Hall and everyone is welcome right across from this door. And lastly, thank you to all of the consecrated persons belonging to the various religious orders uh, serving in our diocese and to the members of the other forms of consecrated life. The church truly appreciates and needs your faithful witness to a life totally given to Christ. God bless everyone here and please have safe travel home. There will be the blessing of throats um, as soon as the procession, the priests come back to the, um, to the sacristy immediately after, there will be the blessing of throats. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thank you. Thanks be to God. So I guess we are processing that.